Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you five other tips for you as a keyboard player playing in a live band. These tips should help you to set up your gears and give some of my experience from the past years playing in a live band to you. So let's start it. So tip number one is about effects. When you play uh, your keyboard or a workstation like I do, for me it's the Phantom currently, they come with a tons of effects, including reverb, Leslie effects and whatever, chorus and, and the list goes on and on. But my tip for you is you should rarely use the effects because in these workstations you have a ton of effects like 100 or even more. And you know, there are special effect pedals, for example, which are very expensive per effect. And there it comes to point. Often the effects do not sound very good in these workstations. And so it is in the Phantom, in my opinion. They sound rather cheap and they will mud up your sound. I experienced when using these effects, you cannot cut really through the mix within the live band. So I started to rarely use effects. Even when I play some roads or something, I always play it dry. I do not use any phaser or chorus or whatever within uh, even this sound because the effects will mud them up and uh, you are just not cutting through the mix. Another story is when you use high quality effects like external effect pedals, for example, they can sound really, really nice and good. In one of my cases here, I also have a very old Roland D70 and it has a chorus inside, which is amazing. It is just not comparable to today's hardware effects. So also, for example, I do not play the Leslie effect of the Roland here because also I think it is sound quite cheap in my opinion. I know the opinions are drifting away for these, uh, these machines, uh, what is usable and what is nice and what is perfect. Uh, but I made the experience that the internal Leslie effect will uh, modify the organ in a way that it's not cutting through the mix anymore. So that's the reason, especially as a keyboard player, why I bought such a, a external Leslie effect pedal. And all these problems are gone. They are cutting right through, but they are very expensive, of course. My second tip today is you should work with a master template to speed up your own workflow at home. So when you are creating new sounds, when you are creating new performance on your workstation, you always need some time to set up the initial settings, which may be same for each and every song you are going to program. And therefore, you should think about to create a master template. If you want to know more in detail about my master template I have created on the Roland Phantom, or if you're playing also a Roland Phantom and you are interested in it, you should check out my old video, which I give you a link down below. There I uh, explain in detail what I mean with a master template and how I apply it. My next tip is about uh, the selection of your sounds during a live performance. You should somehow organize yourself to select the sounds fast. For example, the Phantom comes with a scene chain option where you can set up your whole set list for the uh, for the concert in advance and just click through it and you don't need to uh, switch all these pages till you find your correct sound. I personally do it with an iPad. I have a, a app running which organizes all my lead sheets and also all program changes. So once I press the button for the next song, my whole setup is uh, selecting the correct sounds and the lead sheet will come to the display. You should not take something like two or three minutes uh, between each songs to uh, select all your keyboards, the correct sound that everybody waits for you. All eyes are 
on you and uh, you cannot find the sounds. This is a, a very bad situation. So you should think about a way to organize your presets. Talking about presets, there comes my next tip, which is tip number four. When I see other bands playing live, I sometimes or even more oft, I see keyboarder trying to search for the next sounds quite fast, like clicking on the screen and then selecting the preset. And what does the keyboarder do? He reduces the volume and start to test if the right sounds are loaded like this. And I ask myself, what is he even trying to do? I mean, it's a computer. You select a scene or a program or whatever it is called and it's loaded. So just trust your keyboard. Select the sound like this. Wait for the uh, count in and start. Next song. Select the sound. I have done it. Trust your keyboard. Wait for the count in and start. And so on. You really should trust your keyboard. You do not need to test any sound up from the song. It's just uh, annoying the audience and also your band. <laughs> really. And then I have another tip for you when you have a setup with more than one keyboard. And it's always a, a topic about volume in general. I have already talked about in one of my last videos about it. So if you're interested to see how I level up all my sounds, then you should go back to another video uh, where I talk about these tips. I will also give you a link down below. But today I want to talk about how to level up your uh, instruments to each other. So when you uh, pack all your stuff, you go to the concert, you uh, assemble everything on the stage. Of course, it can happen that you rotate a, a knob or or something happen to your sub mixer uh, when you are mixing your keyboards on your own. So therefore I have a very easy tip for you. I have created a program which is called volume check. And once I select it, I have now a saw waveform selected on my Nord lead. And I also have a saw, wave, a saw waveform selected on my Roland Phantom. And if I check these two, so waveforms. They should have the very same level. And as I use these special uh, saw waveforms on its own program, they will never uh, change volume to uh, internally. So I can use these waveforms to really match the volume of the instruments to each other. And the same I did with my uh, piano module. I just sampled one note into the Phantom. So when I press a button, the sample is played. When I press the other button, the actual sound module will produce the sound. And so I can level up these machines quite easily, less than one minute in front of every concert and everything is rock solid. If I counted correctly, these were already five tips. I will give you some other tips within the next weeks when I record the next video. If you like these videos, please take a look to my channel. I already have several videos uh, talking about tips, talking about experience, uh, creating some synthesizer sounds. So if you're interested in these, take a look, subscribe the channel, give me a like and hope to see you on the next video again. Thank you.